Hello, Buglers. It's Monday, the 17th of May, 2021. Uh, you may, if you are a Britain-based listener, now give your headphones or speaker a hug, and it will register as a legal hug for the Bugle podcast, of which this is issue 4,194. And I, Andy Zaltzman, am host. Joining me this week, a former resident of A, the same house I lived in, and B, the same womb I lived and worked in for nine months, though not at the same time in the case of B. It's the calling sibling, Helen Zaltzman. That was your longest office job, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> as always, a section of the Bugle is going straight in the bin. This week, a Bugle guide to hugging as hugging becomes legal again uh, in Britain, uh, albeit not compulsory, let me emphasise that. Uh, a guide to how to hug friends and loved ones for those who've forgotten how to and become a bit rusty over the last hug-free year. Uh, the Bugle guide to hugging. Um, a, minimise growling. B, avoid screaming. C, do not wear arm spurs. D, remember the difference between a hug and martial arts. Remember, as the old saying goes, judo is not a cuddle. E, if running or walking into a hug, remember to stop your forward motion on or shortly before contact with your hug E. And F, do not attempt to combine your hug with either admin or work, especially if your line of work involves surgery, dispensing advice on military strategy or operating heavy machinery. It will at best make your hug E feel awkward. Uh, that section in the bin. Uh, well, it seems <laughs> like you're not allowed to support the oppressed people of Palestine whilst not being an anti-Semite. Right. That's but I do hate that's... myself, so it does track. <laughs> <laughs> well, Andy, I was about to write a bunch of like very hilarious, incisive and universally unifying comedy about India, China, and the Middle East, as well as the latest abuse scandal in your specific area of interest, whatever it might be. Uh, but then I read this next story, and none of it seemed worth it, because Chernobyl might explode. Right. Well, but, I mean, this is exactly what the world needs, isn't it? Because, I mean, the Middle East, there's no, there's no solution uh, to the Middle East crisis. The, the blame tennis, as so often, has become a gr grinding clay court baseline rally with no foreseeable end. Think Nadal versus Nadal at Roland Garros, but with a added human tragedy. Uh, the UN has just issued a new resolution which simply says, <laughs> and um, uh, perhaps most disappointingly of all, God, the retired deity and former Middle East resident, has failed to break his or her silence on the matter which now stretches back uh, inconveniently a considerable amount to, amount of time, e either to clarify exactly who uh, that land was promised to or to just give it to someone else, uh, the Buddhists or snooker fans, just to, you know, liven up the situation a bit. Our grandmother, who was uh, birthday Chernobyl shares, uh, used to make strawberry ice cream that never thawed. So if we could get... <laughs> <laughs> my, big, my big problem with this... Alice is with this, these concerns that there could be a further explosion is just can no one leave a single TV series alone I mean <laughs> the Chernobyl it was very good big hit around the world but why does everything have to have a f***ing sequel gotta reboot everything Andy comes around long enough you can't bury it in concrete and expect that to be the end <laughs> of the series <laughs> um, <laughs> the problem seems to arise from this sub-reactor room 305 slash 2 uh, which as a cricket fan, I read as 305 for two. And, You're not well. Uh, the second wicket has never <laughs> fallen a score at 305 in any international cricket match, men's or women's. So read into that what you will, people. But to me, that is, that is fishier than a food podcast hosted by two dolphins. <laughs> Helen, I mean... Uh, you're well known on this show for being able to turn anything into a podcast. Uh, I, I heard this uh, story that you, you actually... There was a, a crying child at a bus stop near where you, you lived, and you just laid, laid your hand on the child's weeping head, and the child disappeared and had turned into a podcast. And this, this was... <laughs> uh, is, it, is this true, or is this, this just a, another biblical myth? It just happens, Andy. Right. And, uh, you know, if you're looking for someone to blame for the proliferation of podcasts since <laughs> lockdown, <laughs> you know, I've been trying to keep myself to myself, and yet they just keep coming, so maybe it's just airborne. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, the Republican John Cox, who is running to be California's next governor, having been beaten last time he ran to be California's governor by Gavin Newsom, is campaigning with a thousand pound Kodiak bear named Tag. <laughs> um, 
Uh, <laughs> it is unclear whether Tag shares political affiliations with John Cox because when John Cox is making speeches with Tag, Tag is usually just flopped on the ground looking bored as f um, But the whole, the whole thing is that um, he's running on this Beauty and the Beast campaign where Gavin Newsom is Beauty and he's like, now meet the Beast. And the Beast it's sad is... Play fair. <laughs> the Beast, well, the Beast is supposedly John Cox, who's a very normal looking late middle-aged white man, where he's wearing a business shirt with no tie. That's the drama. <laughs> um, and he's got a bus that says, meet the Beast. Um, however, uh, he went to um, do his uh, speeching in San Diego, which has a city law that bans anyone except for zoos to bring in wild animals. Uh, no person shall offer for sale, give away, bring into or maintain within an area coming within the jurisdiction of this ordinance, any lion, tiger, bear, monkey, wolf, cougar, ocelot, wildcat or skunk. <laughs> well, in some, in some uh, parts of the world, the stone called tiger's eye is believed to ward off the evil eye. Uh, but in this instance, the evil eye was the tiger's eye and it needed an operation. Right. Uh, and we gave it that operation so it could see us better and make its plans. <laughs> Elon Musk, the undisputed Willy Wonka of reality. Uh, last week he said he was going to pay for a moon mission using a meme-inspired joke cryptocurrency based around pictures of a sceptical-looking Japanese dog, uh, causing a crash in the value of the rival pseudo-money Bitcoin by highlighting how bad <laughs> Bitcoin is for the environment, whilst, let us not forget, also planning to blast rockets to the f***ing moon, and having also recently given himself the new job title of Techno King, a title coincidentally fought over vigorously by me and Helen in the 90s club scene. Uh, in Tunbridge Wells. Um. <laughs> yes, at the brass robbing centre. We squared off with our crayons. <laughs> um, Alice, you are a Bugle's official Elon Musk correspondent. Um, uh, are, you starting, are you starting to get worried for him at all? Yeah, I mean, look, Elon Musk continues his long-running winning streak of counterbalancing all of his best business ventures with incredibly bad and annoying failed attempts to be cool and or funny on Twitter or television. Um, he, look, I, this, the thing about this, the thing about this kind of story where he said that he's going to let people pay for space things with Dogecoin and then, you know, that it's, he's going to send his first mission to Mars and it's going to be called Doge One. I find a lot of my smarter friends struggle with stories like this because they think they must be missing something complicated uh, and that this kind of announcement can't possibly be as stupid and pointless as it sounds. <laughs> But the thing is, it is. <laughs> this is as dumb as it sounds. There's no behind the scenes story here. There's no plan. There's no four dimensional chess. There's no chess at all. They are at best playing checkers. Uh, and if it's checkers, they're playing against themselves and they keep losing. Alice, I know you're a massive fan of, uh, of uh, railways as well as billionaires. <laughs> what's, uh, what's the f***ing point? I mean, look, okay, so this is all coming out as he and uh, Melinda Gates split their assets. But of all of the billionaires, I have more time for Bill Gates because at least he's curing malaria while also uh, presumably doing something sinister in the background. Um, <laughs> Filling trains with mosquitoes. <laughs> <laughs> The Daily Mail even was, was not impressed and they took some time out from their latest scoops, including famous woman walk somewhere whilst wearing something, to accuse uh, Johnson of uh, breaking his promises to the electorate. And Johnson replied, but they like that. Look at the election results. I want that. That's the only promise he can keep, to keep none of the other promises. <laughs> he is the guard that never tells the truth, isn't he? <laughs> right, I think people with... underestimate the severity of hacking just because still a lot of people's conception of uh, those who are good at computers is shaped by 80s and 90s films where they're just nerds who no one wants to go to the prom with <laughs> and then they take down the pentagon or something 